there are quite a few different ways of doing workflow. Here we've got a requester application and we'll look at one basic way of doing workflow. Here we've got a bunch of different projects that are going on and we've got in queue um, a bunch of requests that are either waiting assignments sent to an agency. These are all marketing and communications requests that people use a web form to submit. And you can see the ones that are awaiting assignment happen to be colorized. You can do those kinds of things in QuickBase. Let's look at this brochure. We're going to click on the little eyeball there and it's gonna take us to the form that was filled out and coincidentally it was filled out by me. So um, inside here, I'm gonna click on the edit. We'll look at the form that somebody filled out. Now, when they filled it out initially, they may have only filled out this top part of the form. So you can make this form look like anything you'd like to. Down below here, you can see the department, the business unit, all of those types of things, the details of the request if you wish to delve into or put, provide different information. Maybe you've got attachments you wanna to add to this. But down below here, this is the um, workflow. I'm gonna put my name in here because I wanna be notified if somebody should forward this to the agency. I'm gonna also put my name here as a Marcom team. I'm gonna put my name here as planning team. Now, why am I doing this? Because I want to send email notifications when these things are addressed to me. Now, the Markarm team might even be a group of people. It might be Dennis Pierce. It might be uh, Colleen Garten. It might be Karen Block. So all of these team members can be addressed, let's say, if we said, I want to send it to the Markarm team. So we're going to be able to keep track of the email notifications as well as the approvals of each stage. Down below here, we have an activity log and notes. Let's click on save. And in the background, what's happening, that there's an email being sent to Kirk Tracy. And it is because of my attendance in this group. In the upper corner, you can see there's an email and here it is. I just clicked on it. And you can see that it's going to the Marcom group and it's a creative request and here it is here. In red, because I'm an internal person, you can see that these fields have changed and it's just telling me the things that have changed. But I want to deal with this, so I'm going to click on this and if I wasn't logged in, it would ask me to sign in. I'm going to edit, I'm going to approve it and I'm going to forward it to somebody else. Um, down below here, let me approve it and I'm going to send it down to planning. And so now whoever is attending this team uh, can have this in their inbox. Down below here you can see that this was sent to Marcom in this date and time. Now I might say to the planning team, uh, can we uh, accommodate this? And of course I've misspelled this. Um, so let's, anyway, I think it's two M's here. Okay, can we accommodate this question mark? and I'm gonna click on save. Well, this is going to the planning team and who are the members of the planning team? It's just me. So I may see an email notification that tells me, hey, I've been, I now have this record to do. But before we see that, look at the approval has the date stamp and identity of who did it. So let's click on my incoming email and now I've got one that goes to the planning group. And down below, I can see any notes that have been added, the approval that's uh, come uh, thus far. And you can see, can we accommodate this? And Kirk wrote that at this date and time. And, and it was saying, oh, so there's a log of what's happening. And eventually what happens is everybody uh, maybe sends it back to the originator. They, uh, they may want to um, ask questions of the originator so that you can say, gee, I want to send it back to the requesting person. They'll put a little note on it. So this can move around in an ad hoc kind of way. Now, QuickBase also has workflow in a linear, a uh, successor, predecessor kind of process as well. Sometimes people will marry both of these. They'll set the request up in an ad hoc way. Um, you can control who approves it when and track their um, their uh, assent to uh, whether or not this is approved. Now, notice up above, we've got the requests and it's a single table. It's like a tab in a spreadsheet. And if I click on it, I can see all the other requests that are in queue. Now you notice that there were four here and now that other one has a little yellow flag next to it that has been updated. 
what if I wanted to bring in some information, say, from Salesforce? I want to bring data in. I'm going to add a table from a connected table here. And let's go out to Salesforce and let's pull account information. We'll have accounts. Maybe our customers are our accounts. And I'm going to say an account is a single one. And maybe this symbol uh, is for accounts. Now, we're looking outside of QuickBase. So we can pull data from other web services. And here's the Salesforce one. But now if you have back-end databases, you may be able to put your data in a secure FTP site. And we can pick it up and make it a part of the ecosystem inside of QuickBase. I'm going to click on Salesforce. And this will only take a second. Inside, this is my username and password, which I'm going to say, yes, please use that. And it's going out to Salesforce and looking at all the applications and use cases that I have in my account. And you can see here, accounts, contacts. Since I'm doing accounts, I'm going to grab accounts. And out of accounts are all the fields that are a part of that particular table. And so we'll see them populated on the left side where we can decide which ones we want or we can select them all and drag them all over here. So this is all from the Salesforce account. And now I can decide if I want to filter this and I can put many filter functions inside here where the parent account is greater than $10,000 or whatever the numbers are. But I'm going to say, let's bring all of the accounts in. And then I get to set what the frequency is. And I'm going to put it on manual, but you can set it up to do this every hour if you wish to. So now we've created this table. And what it's going to do is make map over that connection. And now what we've got is a table of account information, which is being refreshed. Once we have this data inside of our QuickBase, like we do right now, we can connect it to the requests so that they are part of this. So now you have uh, extended your QuickBase to an outside data source, and you have your own version of the individual record um, here for your internal use for your requests.